Hello everybody, welcome back. It is kind of gloomy and dark today, so I've really cranked the brightness setting on my camera, but hopefully everything is still clear and visible to you all. Today, I wanted to do a kind of double feature video. I'm gonna be sharing with you my current fountain pen collection and then also because I am pretty new and I don't have a ton of fountain pens, although <laughs> I somehow have accumulated five, which I feel like isn't a small number. I'm also gonna be sharing the different inks that I have currently in these pens. So I am new to fountain pens, so let me know if you have any tips, favorite pens, favorite ink, any of that below, because I feel like there's so much to learn when it comes to this topic, it's actually wild, but I thought it would be fun to kind of share my beginner stage of it now and the different inks and pens I'm using now and I'll probably just update you guys intermittently so we can all see the different pens and inks and just kind of go on this journey together. So that is what I'm gonna be doing. So why don't I first start by sharing the actual case that I keep my pens in? I currently have all my fountain pens housed in this leather tool case by the Superior Labor. I'm sure some people will think it's quite risky storing fountain pens in leather. And uh, trust me, the uh, idea of the pens le leaking has not gone beyond me, but <laughs> this is the case that I have for now and it fits my pens really well. I don't know what I'm gonna do once I buy more pens, but I think this is a great spot for me to at least keep the currently inked pens because I don't think I would have more than four or five, but this is kind of how the case looks. There's a main slot in the back here that holds all of the pens. And then there's a second slot here, which you could maybe fit like a, I don't know, like a clip or something, I guess if you really wanted to, but it's a bit of a tight squeeze. So I just keep my pens here and this, kind of main pouch here is quite big and quite wide. So it's perfect for those kind of thicker pens that need a lot of space in order to fit comfortably. So right now, these are the five fountain pens I own. I did bring out this pen here. <laughs> this is kind of a funny story, but this is actually a Kaweco demonstrator pen. This is the rollerball pen and they unfortunately discontinued this pen, which makes me kind of sad because I really love the clear with the gold accents. However, even though this isn't a fountain pen, I want to include it because I do have plans to make this a fountain pen. I did some research on Reddit and you can actually just replace the kind of pen grip part that comes with fountain pens on this pen because it just screws in. So. I have been looking for a grip that would be this clear material that this Koweko was made in, but I have also tried the coconut color, which is like this frosted plastic in here. And it's obviously not an exact match, but it's pretty close. So I would love to find a grip that is the kind of demonstrator plastic. So it all matches, but I did wanna quickly mention that before I dive into my pens because I am planning on somehow making this guy a fountain pen, but for now it's a roller gel and it will uh, hang out right up there. But let's actually get into the real fountain pens that I don't need to convert and find parts for. <laughs> so these are the five that I currently have and I think what I'll do is I'll go through each pen and then swatch it and talk about the inks that I have going on in these guys. So let's just get started. Alrighty. I'm gonna do all my swatching today on this Rhodia Grid notepad, just cause it's really big and it'll be easy to write on. And where to start? I guess it would be like quite normal to go left to right, but I'm gonna start with <laughs> the second from the right. So the first pen that I have in my collection and that I have currently inked is this Twisby Eco Rose Gold Fountain Pen. And I have this in a medium nib. 
Now I will say I did buy this pen first in my kind of fountain pen journey. It was one of the earlier ones. And I will say at the time I was still discovering what kind of nibs and inks I liked and all of that kind of stuff. So I will say I am thinking about getting this pen in a broad nib. I'm thinking of actually getting the Diamond 580, which is like the more expensive version with a broad nib next, but I haven't done it yet. However, until then, this is a medium nib. So this is the, the Twisby Eco and medium. And I have it inked right now with Ferris Wheel Press. Moss Park Green. And I wonder if you can hear like the scratching of the nib. I kind of love that sound. It's one thing I've really appreciated with these fountain pens. So Moss Park Green is a really nice, almost like cool toned, like pine green, as you can see here. It's really, really pretty. I really like it. I just wish I could see it in a broad nib because I've discovered as I've started to use fountain pens that I really love those really thick broad nibs because I love being able to see the color of the ink and the different kind of, I think it's called sheening or shading, like the different color tones that pick up and you do see them a little bit in a medium nib, but you would obviously see them a lot more in a broad nib, but I think it's good to have different options when it comes to your pens. So I am glad that I do have one medium hanging around. I think I'll jump into this one next. So this next pen that I have is a Kaweco Sport. This is a limited edition color in the olive. And I originally bought this pen in a fine nib and then quickly realized that I don't like fine nibs for my fountain pens and I swapped it for a broad nib. So I actually had the experience of swapping the nib myself, which was actually not as hard as I thought it would be. I was kind of nervous because you have to kind of yank the pen out of the body. And by pen, I mean nib. You have to like yank the nib out of the body, which, you know, sounds a bit scary, especially if you haven't done it before. But it was actually pretty easy. So one thing I really liked about these pens, especially as a beginner, while I was still kind of finding out what nibs I liked was the Koweko Sports, you can swap the nibs. Same with uh, this guy, which I'll talk about next, the Lamy. So as you're starting to wanna try out different nib sizes, the nice thing about these pens is you can just buy a replacement nib for like 20 bucks and you don't have to necessarily invest in a new pen. So I really have been enjoying the fact that you can do that kind of swapping, especially since it took me a little bit to find out what nib size I prefer because even between pens, I've noticed that there is some variety. So this is a Koweko Sport in bold and I have it inked with J Urbain Le Dete, which I have in a cartridge. So I'll just show you that quickly. You can buy converters for these pens, but I originally bought this guy in a cartridge. So I'm just trying to use those up right now. And then once I finish my cartridge, I'll probably buy like a 10 mil bottle just so that I have more because this brown is like one of my favorites. I love it so much. So this is my newest fountain pen. This is a Kaweco Sport in the coconut color. So it's this frosted plastic. So just to compare the full demonstrator, this is very clear plastic and this guy is a bit more opaque. So I bought this guy recently from Wonder Pens. And this one is so good and I absolutely love, I think the ink I have in here is my favorite right now. So let me just focus on swatching it. So this ink here, I guess a bit of a backstory. I have the 
Ferris Wheel Press, the two Canadian collection kind of sample sets. I got them for Christmas, I think last year. So it's been a while. And just a heads up, I actually need to like re-ink this now. So <laughs> that's why it's running a little bit thin, but I forgot that there was a second green in the set. And a while ago, I was swatching all the inks in the set because I had gotten more into fountain pens and I knew about Peter Moss Green or, Par sorry, <laughs> Moss Park Green. I keep mixing those up, but I didn't even realize there was a second green in the set. And I swatched it and I kind of lost my mind a little bit because it's just so good. It's this more kind of yellowy green. You can really see the difference compared to Moss Park up here. But I don't know, I just really love it. I've been trying to use it whenever I can. My family was playing like cards. We play Rummy 3000 and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna break up my fountain pen to write down the score because I wanna, <laughs> I wanna use it and yeah, this, this green is probably my favorite right now, but that is what I have inked up in there. I won't go on too much of a tangent, so maybe I'll just end it while I'm not oversharing, but really excited about that ink. I think I will get a bottle of that once I'm done my sample. I'm trying to kind of figure out rules that I want to establish around when I want to buy a bottle of something and when I want to and, or I guess how many samples I want to use. So right now I have Ferris Wheel Press samples. So my kind of rule at the moment is unless it's something I know I really want, like a brown, because I tend to like those a lot, I'll probably just go through a Ferris Wheel Press sample first. And then if I make it through that and I still want to use the ink, then I'll buy the bottle. But let me know below what you guys do because I know it can be easy to accumulate a lot of inks and I want to try my best to just pick up bottles that I know I really like and I know I really want to use. So let me know. Okay, so the last pen that I have inked up and the second last one I have in my collection is this Lamy Safari fountain pen. This is in the 2022 limited edition cream color, which I really like. And I have it in a medium nib, although I will tell you right now, I am planning <laughs> to swap it out for a broad nib because I like broad nib fountain pens, I've come to discover. And there's nothing wrong with the medium at all. And a lot of people actually messaged me when I bought this pen asking how the nib was because apparently Lamy nibs can be a bit hit or miss. This one is fantastic. It writes really well. If anything, I feel like it's one of my favorite nibs, just with the writing experience and the like kind of feedback it gets, but I just prefer broader nibs. So I think I'm gonna swap it out and hopefully the broad nib I get works just as well. So what I have inked in here right now is Sailor Seki. It's one of the sheening inks that they released last year. And <laughs> funny story about this, I bought it thinking it was the brown one, which I'll put the name on the screen. And I had wanted this one as well, but told myself I would buy the brown one first because I thought it would be more versatile. And then I got home and realized I'd bought the wrong ink. <laughs> so I will be buying the brown one at some point, but I ended up getting this guy as well, which is kind of cool. So, okay, these are all of the ones I have currently inked in my fountain pens. So I guess a bit of a trend. We got a lot of browns and earth tones and greens, which doesn't really surprise me. I will also quickly mention, since I only have four of my five pens inked up right now, I do also have a fifth fountain pen. This is the Traveler's Company Brass Fountain Pen. It comes with a fine nib, and because I don't really like fine nibs, right now I'm just in the middle of swapping it out for a medium nib by Schmidt. I saw Lauren from Journal Sunshine do that with her 
Traveler's Company pen and it looked really good. So I just need to order that nib from Jet Pens and get that done. But it's just living in this case for now. And if I do for, for some reason figure out how to fountain penify this guy, I'll just swap them. But that is where it's living for now. And that would be the last fountain pen in my collection. So that is a look at my fountain pens. This is a look at my January currently inked. I don't know if I'll swap out my inks every month. I think I'll just do it when I feel like it, but I hope you enjoyed seeing the pens that I've bought as a newer person to fountain pens and the different inks that I currently have filled up in these pens. If you do want to share your favorite pens and inks, please let me know below because it's really cool to be able to find all these different ink colors and it's just really fun to be able to customize your fountain pen so much. So I would love any suggestions or recommendations. And besides that, thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you so much to my patrons for supporting me and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye everybody. Bye.